Monday morning on Daily Delivery. Michael Rand here, Patrick Royce with me as usual. Uh, Patrick, we got a lot to get to today. Well, some twin stuff, a lot of twin stuff, actually, as we were just kind of cycling through all the stuff before we start recording, which probably people should know that the, the best stuff comes before we record. No, I'm just kidding. The best stuff comes <laughs> after, we, after we start recording, of course. But yeah, uh, yes, it does. Uh, twin stuff. Um, Maybe a little PWHL talk towards in the show, but we got obviously we're going to start with the Timberwolves, Patrick. Um, they win Saturday in impressive fashion again. That's five in a row in the postseason. They haven't lost yet. Game two tonight in Denver, where I imagine they will take Denver's best game, just like Phoenix tried to give them their best game, uh, probably in game four when it when it got to desperation time because Denver's got to know lose this game uh they are in a world of trouble and patrick got to be honest for more than half of that game on saturday i was just looking out on the court and i was like wolves seem like the better of the two teams right now i don't know if that's going to stand for 6 7 how many however many games this thing's going to go but that is how it felt for a while in that game what's your impression of where we are right now I got to admit to you that uh, Saturday I was at the Twins game and then I had a uh, granddaughter's hockey. I had to go out and do some granddaughter's hockey duty. So I spent a lot of time listening on the radio. I watched the replay last night to okay. take it in fully on television. And uh, yes, the uh, second half uh, was... Uh, was a pretty well uh, the the third they've been the third quarter titans here uh, the uh, Timberwolves and that was the case again first half uh, Ant was the only guy who showed up really and yeah. uh, I mean Towns battled a little bit but uh, and then the third quarter and the fourth quarter they were the best team uh, Jokic uh, and they, and they beat. Uh, they beat Denver with Jokic playing pretty well too. It's I mean, he didn't get his usual quote of rebounds. Uh, which he's not going to, I wouldn't think, in this series with uh, Gobert and uh, Towns, uh, uh, Towns and the way this team rebounds. And Ant has really become a rebounder. But when you look at it, I'm, I'm not sure the Timberwolves played any close to their best and they still look like the better team. Because, I mean, Ant's now Edwards isn't going to be any better than that. But uh, McDaniels, now he was playing great defense, chasing Murray around and stuff like that, but he scored zero. Right. I think Rudy had six. Conley hit some huge shots the second half after not doing anything in the first half. But uh, yeah, there's you look at it now and uh it's it's gonna it's gonna go down to the wire. Hopefully you can finish him off in six. You don't have to go out and try to beat him in seven. But uh uh it, it is amazing. Uh we're used to uh hearing from uh, the uh fans that we aren't being treated fairly by the uh tv announcers the national tv <laughs> announcers that right. have some of minnesota reggie miller was fantastic uh praising the, the timberwolf and uh and then the whole crew was and uh you know they got uh, they have uh, they have awoken the nation and uh, a lot of neutral observers are saying uh, they're they're giving this team credit for being young I think basically because of Ant and McD Ant and McDaniel's but uh, the but the, the nation has awoken to the Timberwolves here and they're getting getting praised to the point that if anybody feels bad it would be Denver that hey there we're the defending champs and that but. Uh, uh, you explained the NBA to me, though. We played uh, Saturday, and we're going to have to play again tonight, and then we don't play till Friday. What's, no. uh, isn't isn't that right? They don't yeah, play till Friday. It's got to be right? TV. So I'm sure it's what TV. What is that? Do we I'm have sure a concert TV. on Thursday or something? I don't know. I'm sure it's TV. I'm I sure know, maybe it's, they, yeah, maybe other, they got a... other con other yeah arena availability. But yeah, it's the three days off. You... Denver to Minnesota does not take three days. They're not taking like a covered wagon here or something no. to travel. They're taking nice <laughs> no. luxury airliners no, I, to I, get here. So I don't think they need all of that, uh, all of that travel time. I'm sure it's got something to do with arena availability and TV and how they want the, how they want the games to stack up. But yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's it, that, that much time off between is going to be kind of, kind of hard to, hard to fathom, but yeah, it's just that first game. It was if if that's the version of Jamal Murray, Denver's going to get Denver's in trouble because that was he's he's not yeah. he's not himself right now and he's not 100 percent healthy. 
And I think that uh, the Timberwolves also, uh, I was surprised how much McDaniels guarded him, weren't you? Yes, I, did. I, was. I didn't think they'd do it that way, but he, uh, uh, you saw him chasing him all over. Not He didn't guard him like constantly, but, uh, but when he, he uh, guarded him a lot and pressed him up the court a few times too, which was interesting that, that uh, McDaniels was, uh, yeah. you know, picking him up really early and uh, trying to hound him and, uh, and they were, you know, Jokic, they did as good as you can. They're going to, you know, he's going to get away with banging you, and uh, you're going to have a hard time banging him back because they protect him pretty good. But uh, I, I, he can shoot those threes all he wants to. That's fine with me. I'd rather have him out there. Yeah. Uh, you know, what do you go, two for nine, something like that, two for yeah. eight or something on threes. So, uh, you know, let him, let him throw the threes up. But he is a uh, – as I've said before, the most unique basketball player of my lifetime, yes. and uh, he is good. It'll, it, it'll. I mean, that was the definition of a war in oh, the yeah. NBA. That game, that that second half, that was the definition of NBA playoff basketball. Is best. Reggie Miller said, "If we're going to give us seven of these, <laughs> yes. I mean, he was very." And and Reggie wasn't known as the most physical player in the no. world, but. Uh, but he was, uh, I mean, they were the, as I said, this team is, uh, this team is a, has become a national phenomenon right now. And with the idea, I also like the facts that the fans were saying, oh, the refereeing was terrible. They want Denver to win. Why do they want Denver to win? Hmm. But it's not like, you know, it's, it's that, that we're going to have, where's Jokey from? I keep forgetting. Where's he from? Uh, uh, which which European countries? Uh, Serbia. Uh, I can't remember. We want better ratings. We want better TV ratings in Serbia. Is that right. why we want them to win? <laughs> what is wrong with you morons? They don't care who wins this game. They the uh, ant has become much watched must watch tv nationally yeah, so right yes, now. So, they want uh, him to be the face of the league. If anything, <laughs> they want the wolves to win. Yeah, and so they're uh, you know they're not going to. Uh, they're not going to go out of their way. I think a lot of people saw the ant getting the technical and thought somehow that that was, uh, you know, and Reggie Miller went nuts when uh, they called the uh, they called the T on on uh, Reggie on Ant for staring down right. uh, Reggie was Jackson. It? Was it? Yeah, Reg, yeah, Reggie Jackson, and then they got and they let then they let uh, Murray away with pulling out the right. pistols, which right. was uh, really really stupid, but. Uh, you get some inconsistency because it's an impossible game to referee, yes. but I thought the I, I don't think that the Timberwolves in any way got a bad shake no, on no, Saturday's so. game. No, I don't either. I feel like to go Bears defense and obviously just having all of the seven footers they have to throw at Jokic, but the fact that Gobert a couple times, I feel like in the second half, including one really big possession in the fourth quarter, that he can defend that somehow defend that lob from Jokic yes. to Gordon. I think it's Jokic to Gordon. Yes. It's just like that short lob that just seems like it's automatic for Denver, that he swatted one of those away and it became a turnover. Um, yes. Denver's going to have to rethink some things. I'm sure they will. I mean, Denver's such a good team. They're, they're well coached. Well, they will They will re, They will will adjust. They will, you know, Jokic probably shoot more, you know, eight footers instead of trying to lob that thing to Gordon. But the fact that yeah. you can defend that, and defending an undefendable play uh, will will mess with another team. Yes, and that's that has been actually. That's what, when you watch him play. It's the uh, he could either shoot that thing flat footed or throw the uh, throw the lob, and he loves to throw that. As you just pointed out, all all of I've watched him this year, I don't, I can't remember anybody taking that away from him. The, no. the fact that they shoot so much. The, the fact that they shoot so many layups off his passes is amazing, yes. and. Uh, and they if you take that away, and they uh, they were uh, Finchy might have had a few a couple of days off to get his knee fixed, but their preparation, uh, the coaching preparation for this game was tremendous. Yes, I thought defensively, didn't you? Yeah, but it, it is it is amazing. You know, you always say this is the best defense team in the NBA, and it was statistically. But it is uh, it is kind of incredible to see actual defense. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. Uh, that there's a really good defensive plan, and now that we have the uh, 
They, there was only contact was marginal. Now that they've defined this, this, half the contact as marginal, which is kind of a new term, uh, that they're so basically what they're admitting is you can foul now. Yeah, it's you can just, foul a little bit. It's a little yeah, you bit. Can foul. It's but it's marginal contact, but yeah. they're even going to overrule it. But uh, it's uh, now all their decisions on those replays come from New York, though, right? Yeah, the guys New, go New over Jersey there and look at the yes. video, New Jersey, whatever yeah, it is. Yes, I know. Yes. Yeah, uh, but that's uh, it is. Uh, I like the way the game's being officiated now that you yeah. can bang, bang each other a little, but they do. You got a 310 pound center and you let him get that shoulder into a guy yes, and bang him. And uh, I don't know how hard, I don't know what the cutoff is on when a, when a left tackle runs into you. <laughs> that is it, does, is it, does, you know, what, what's permissible and what's not. And right. I don't think the officials know either because hey, the one thing in the officials defense is, they're officiating a game that's impossible to officiate. Okay, we got to have that. We got to know that. So anyway, yeah. yeah. I mean, if they, we'll see what happens tonight because I feel like Denver. This will be this will be their best shot. They kind of took. I mean, I don't think they were surprised by Saturday and what the Wolves brought, but I think they got their attention maybe in a way that you don't before you've lost a game. But the way the Wolves are playing right now, you have to look at this and say this is a team. That can go to the NBA Finals at the very. I it's it, yeah. they're just they're playing that well, and I did not. I, that was not my impression going into the playoffs. So, you know, we had they were. I just didn't think they were great for the last month and a half, two months of the season, and then they found this gear. They got some rest. They found this gear, got some confidence against Phoenix, and now you look at it. You you have to say this is a team that could. I'm not saying they're favored to come out of the West now because Denver's still the. I'm saying I'm sure the favorite in this series, even down one nothing, but. You win this series, and I like their chances against whoever they play in the next series too. Like, and that's I don't know. This is a team that could they could go to the this is a team that can go to the finals. The Minnesota Timberwolves, Patrick. Yeah, they uh, they could. There's uh, you know, there's no doubt about that. Uh, the thing about it, yeah, Denver was four and a half, I think, weren't they? Yes, Which for is, the game. Yes, just a touch high, and then it. I saw that in the middle of the third quarter, they were five and a half. Uh, oh. so, you know, or going into the second half, they the point spread has gone up to five and a half. So, uh, you know, people were still expecting, uh, uh, you know, the the Denver to handle them. But you look at Denver, and they didn't really play that well in a Lakers series. No. So they went they went five games against the against an okay Laker team, but not a not a great one, and. Uh, you know the Lakers were able to play physical with them too, which was um, you know kind of odd to say the least. So, uh, and they don't have depth. They're missing a couple of their what guys that were on the bench for them last year. They let yeah. them go, and they're they're not as deep as they were last year. And then, you know the Timberwolves. It the the NBA now is if you got eight usable guys, you got depth because the playoffs, of the cap, yeah. and they uh, and they got. The Timberwolves got depth because they got, you know, Nas Nas won the fourth quarter, and yes. uh, everybody was saying, "Boy, he banked that one." And he went crazy. He'd already done a couple of big things in that period before he banked the one in. Right. So uh, I mean, he was great, and uh, after not doing anything, but he just just having that extra body when you know when Cat gets his three four fouls, you know, you got a guy that can play for him, right? Yeah. I mean, that's how many teams in the league have have the third big guy? Not many, buddy. Not many. So that's a big advantage. Yeah, it is. I mean, we'll see what happens tonight again. I don't know. It's um, yeah. Denver. Denver makes some adjustments, things like that. They they they'll they'll give them they'll give them their best game. Then they'll have three days to think about it. And I don't know. It feels like it's it's setting up for a classic series. And I think I don't know where I saw this, but I think like six out of the seven games in this series are on the same dates as that Wolves Kings series from 20 years ago, including game seven would be on the same date. So kind of tracking towards a pretty, it could be tracking towards a memorable series at this point. It's, it has that feel to it. Well, if anybody from the Timberwolves uh, promises to bring an Uzi and stuff, that <laughs> probably gets suspended. So you, you better, better, uh, better uh, watch your, uh, watch your pregame uh, quotes from right. uh, that, the NBA 
we're all more sensitive to that than we were yeah. back then. Although uh, uh, KJ took a lot of heat too, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's fun, man. It's fun, and it's uh, I don't I don't care what anybody says. A good grueling. NBA playoff game between two evenly matched teams, even when it drags out and the stupid replays stretch it out another eight minutes at the end of the game. It's it's as good as it gets right now. Yeah. And I'm enjoying the uh, the interplay between uh, Chris Finch and Mike Nori too. the uh, the kind of little yeah. jabs, the one liners and just the fact that they're making this work with their head coach, like, you know, sitting, sitting in the second row with that right after knee surgery. It's, it's be, that, you know, winning game one kind of turned that into a less of a storyline, but it's, it's, how, it's, it's a funny little thing right now. How come uh, Nori left Denver? Is it Calvin Booth wanted him to leave Denver? I don't know. Or I don't know. Did, yeah, going did they, did they make him a, did they make him the top assistant and Maybe he wasn't a Denver or something? I don't I don't know how that works, but yeah, uh, I'm not sure either. Yeah. Yeah. And uh I Reggie, I know, was uh, kind of giving all the credit to Nori coaching there on the sideline, but it's 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 a uh, I don't think we've figured out the dynamic yet, have we? That what's no. going on. And of course I don't think they have either because it's no, you know, it's, it's such a unique, unique situation. But I like when Nori, Nori said Nori that. seems like a cool guy to have though, too. Yeah. Well, and he's just cracking it, cracking people up the other day when he said all the all the plays that he called were the ones that got buckets, <laughs> and all the ones that Finch called were the ones that didn't work. He was just joking, yeah, but just, right. they can give and each other Malone's, a little bit of a hard time. Uh, and Malone's a lifer too, isn't he? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's a he's a beat up old basketball coach who's been through the wars, and you know, there's nothing else in his head except basketball, just like Finch, you know, and just and like Tibbs, other, our guy you know, Tibbs got out of the first Tibbs. round. They tried yeah, to try to kick after, it away in game five. That game, game five was five was brutal. And uh, then I, I watched Tibbs's post game after game six, and okay. uh, and he was even cracking wise once really? in a while, but uh. Talk about playing minutes. My God. Oh, yeah. They were, I think, Devin Sinzo in in that overtime game. I think, I think, uh, Devin Sinzo played 52. I think it was 47 or something. That's amazing. (laughs) It's, uh, so, uh, but, uh, you know, probably saved his job. If he doesn't get out of the first round, he probably gets fired. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, you know, so. Open a 5.15% annual percentage yield nine-month certificate from Royal Credit Union. Open now at rcu.org slash certificate 515. Early withdrawal penalties could reduce earnings and principal. APY accurate as of 4 24 insured by NCUA. Um, let's move on to the Twins, Patrick. The, uh, yeah, it was fun. The, the streak is over, 12 games. Um, you pointed out the other day the the long streak back in 1980, which <laughs> you know kind of came out of nowhere, this one. <laughs> came out of nowhere it was two weeks ago patrick that we ripped them so so oh, bad God. that uh, i felt a little bad i felt a little sheepish almost but they were seven and 13 at that point then they reel off oh, 12 batting, in a row batting 195 yes they point. were they and were then bad they, then they hit like 350 during this thing yes. or something and uh but uh um, why i'm laying on the couch watching yesterday I didn't go to the game because we had Jim Sue in there with the Bobby Nightingale, and uh, and uh, they uh, load the bases with no outs in the second inning, don't score, and you right away you're saying this isn't the way it's been done during no. the twelve game losing streak. And, uh, streak yeah. It wasn't either. A uh, twelve game winning streak. Uh, Joe Ryan looked great early, but then they got a. You know that they left him on base, and then he served up his traditional home run. And uh, yeah, they got knocked around, and uh, big loss too, uh, losing Brock Stewart. Uh, oh yeah, I guess it was almost predictable because the same thing happened to him last year. But last year, I didn't realize he missed three months last year. Yeah, I knew he meant I thought it was like two, but uh, you take him out of that bullpen and put Cody Funderburk in it, and he gets up four or five runs. So. Uh, yeah, they now Boston's not much of a hitting team. Correct. Uh, so they held them down uh, Tuesday, uh, fr- Friday, and Saturday. But now you got that Seattle bunch coming to town with great starting pitching. So, yeah. uh, you know, uh, you know, it's but it's hey, it, it did rescue the season. It got you know, it got people interested to some degree again. Everybody's mad about the TV situation, yes. but uh, but uh, you know the. Uh, 
they 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 played better then uh, during that series than that, during that run and uh, and I thought it was I mean Willie Castro was an offensive machine all of a sudden Ryan Jeffers is Ryan Jeffers is going to be the first guy in Twins history to be the most improved twin in back to back seasons. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's amazing. Can you imagine him three, four years ago hitting either one, two, or three for you in the no. in the lineup like he no. is now? And he's in there every day, even when he's not catching. Right. Guardy would this would give Guardy a nervous breakdown. Oh yeah, oh. Hit, we'd get a third catcher having up here. Both they'd, they'd, catch, they'd have to get a third both catcher his up here. Catchers in the lineup. <laughs> yeah, he'd have to have. He'd have to have. Maybe he'd have a third catcher, and he'll say, we could use him as our mop-up reliever right. if we're getting beat, you know. So, Bring back uh, the Tortuga. Yeah, Bring back not. the Tortuga. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, there was some uh, reference to our love, beloved Williams Ostadio being the last one to do something positive, but I can't remember what it was, but either Phil or Bobby Nightingale had it in the uh, in in their game story or in one of their notebooks the other day, but uh, – I wonder where he is. I, I know he's not in the big leagues right now, but uh, he's certainly missed. He was uh, he was more fun than the circus, man. He was great. So no, he was great. Yeah, I, I looked. I've you know, people pop into my head at some point. You know, baseball's perfect for that. And I think I looked him up a couple of weeks ago. I can't remember what he's doing right now, but he's he was a unique player. Um, well, he came up and then he didn't. He never struck out, right? It was he came up and it was like three thousand professional yeah. oh. at bats. He struck out like twelve, twenty times. Yes, because was... he swings at the first thing he could reach yes. every at bat. Yes, know, it was. Uh, it was my first game. He first time he ever played. It was center field and Wrigley Field when That's it was a right. hundred degrees on oh, a Saturday, gosh. and they had three guys. I was down there. They had three guys leave with the the heat. That was one of the worst weekends of my life. It's 100 degrees in Chicago, and I talked the wife into taking the train and <laughs> took us eight right. and a half hours to get there, and she threatened to divorce me. And uh, I had to, I had to return tickets on the train, and I had to just throw them away and take their fly back because they wouldn't have. They would have been all over. The marriage would have been all over if we got back on that train again. So that was a horrible weekend. To go to, you go to Wrigley thinking you're going to have a good time, and it's 105. You know, it was unbelievable. What was, what was so bad about the train? Is it just takes too long? It's boring? Eight forever. It's yeah. unbelievable. Eight and a half hours, and they stopped to let freight trains were by for like 45 minutes. <laughs> we were, uh, I wrote a, I wrote a blog about it. I posted it the other day, and yeah. uh, it was pretty funny. It was about, you know, you're out in the brush for 45 minutes with yeah. just there's some train in Red Wing that hasn't gotten down here yet. <laughs> you know, you're uh, the train's an hour late, and it's still 100 miles away from the St. Paul Depot. You know, you made a bad mistake, I'll tell you that. Yeah. You couldn't get me on one of those trains again if you gave me ten thousand dollars for god's sake <laughs> anyway anyway it's uh yeah the the uh uh the uh, twins all oh, it's uh you know we lost buxton here and nobody's surprised yeah. and it's uh and they're trying to make it sound I, and yeah i don't know this time it doesn't seem like it's as serious as it's been but right. uh it, it's almost as if they expected that this that uh Every once in a while, they're going to have to shut him down here. For yeah. a while. And, uh, you know, when the knee starts barking and then, but when they put him back, they're going to put him back in center field because they know the DH thing doesn't work. Right. That was proven. That was demonstrated rather emphatically last year yes. that it doesn't work for him because he's not the hitter he was, and I no. don't think he ever will be. So, um, You pointed out the other day, too, that winning these winning this winning streak of 12, the, it did, you know, throughout Twins history, obviously the most famous one is the 15 gamer that came in uh, 1991. It predated, kind of jump started their World Series season. But some of these other long streaks, like early on in the streak when they was like getting up to five, six, seven games, and you know, you get people started writing about it, and it was like um, the first eight game streak since 2011. And I was like, 2011? They won? They lost 99 games that year? And then you <laughs> yeah. wrote the other day about the 1980 streak where they won. Well, that, was, yeah. that was the last 12 gamer, right? And they. That team was no that, good either, right? It was the end of a bad they season. Were, they were bad, yeah. They, but the uh, that was the Twins record in Minnesota. You know, the Twins record 
till 1991. Yes. 12 in 1980 was the record. And yeah, that was a team that was so bad. Mock quit. In yes. August 24th, they offered him a contract extension. He turned it down and he resigned instead <laughs> and went back to Palm Springs. And, uh, you know, the Johnny Girl, who nice guy, most one of the most ill-equipped guys for handling big league managing, not because the on field decisions, but he couldn't handle all the rest of it completely. Sure. He was such a shy guy. And but they all of a sudden they win twelve in a row. And that was a team that John Castino won the triple crown with thirteen home runs <laughs> and sixty four RBIs <laughs> with three oh two batting average. But the power figures were unbelievable. Thirteen homers. Uh, I saw Falvey and Rocco in the office when I was walking by after doing the the post game stuff on yeah. uh, on Saturday, and I said, uh, I said, well, you've now equaled one of the worst teams in Twins history for uh, twelve games in a row. So <laughs> don't get too cocky here. So. <laughs> anyway, yes, yeah, so I mean, in terms of just be the pure, you know. Saving of a season, if it, it felt like the season was just yeah. going off the rails, right? Like oh, so when they were seven God. and thirteen, when you know they they just seemed legitimately bad, mm-hmm. and now they're of course what nineteen and fourteen it would be, and everything feels like okay. I don't I still don't know how good they are, but I know they're not. You know they're not just going to be irrelevant for five months of the year at least. No, they're uh, really short of starting pitching. No, I mean yes. they're going to have to. They're sitting up. Uh, God loves Simeon Woods Richardson. He's not a big league starter. He just, you know, what the other day he pitches and they had three swings and misses or something. Yeah, I mean, right. that was, he just yeah. doesn't have pitches that can get by people. Yeah. And, uh, you know, his fastball 93 and uh, at maximum and, uh, you know, not great command. And then this Festa, mm-hmm. who they were thinking they had on the way, yeah. got clobbered yesterday in, uh, in St. Paul. So uh, they really don't have a, a fifth starter of any. My my prediction is we're not going to get Williams Williams Ostadia back, but the Dauber will make three or four starts Whoa. for the Twins this year. Wow. We will see the Dauber again before the wow. year's over. That's what we'll see, and that you know try to try to dazzle him with the sinker ball. The greatest, you know, we just got to hope the Dauber doesn't pitch too good. Because then you're going to have to extend his contract be- beyond 2027. It's now through 2027. Do you know that they have two options on that cr- yes. on our contract? Yes. They could keep him secure until 2029. That's amazing. God love the Dauber. He turned that. He turned pitching good for four games into a into a <laughs> an endless contract. It was right? amazing. Yeah. So it, it the other thing, though, have you watched? Uh, have you seen the way Sonny Gray is pitching in St. Yes. Louis? He's been pretty good. Pretty if good. you had that to do over again, oof. you know, yeah. it was it was not. If you could have said to him at the end of the season, "We'll give you three years at sixty-five," you think he would have taken it? That uh, would have been. Know. I don't know. He might have. He, he seemed to like it here, but he also seems to like. Yeah, I think he was ready to cash in one more big contract. But yeah, that would have been. Oh, that's well, it was his first time he ever been a free agent. Right. So, right. Yeah. I don't know. He he seemed like he was just kind of he was destined for it. I think he knew they weren't in the in the spot to resign him. But that was you know that was the story of the off season. It was they didn't you know they didn't go get any starting pitching. De Sclafani was was billed as the me. guy they got, but they knew right. They they knew that yeah. it wasn't going to be a, that wasn't going to be it. And there's just nothing there. There's nothing there. Well, and they don't have it. They'd have to, uh, you know, and there's not pitching floating around either. No. So, you know, I mean, there's they're not really, they're going to have to find one somewhere in the system. They were hoping for Canarino. Now they probably would have had to have him pitch half a year and the minors to be ready to pitch, but he broke down again. So you're never going to see him here the way it looks. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a thin starting pitching situation. And, uh, I would guess Louis Marlin will be back if he pitches the two decent games in AAA. And right. uh, and because Simeon Richards, Simeon Woods Richardson has just not got big league starter stuff. He can pitch out of your bullpen, but I just don't see him being able to give you more than 
three and two thirds or something. You know what? Maybe Chris Archer's out there someplace. Is he still? That's is he? Is he but yeah, go back so. to him for that. Dylan Bundy. Go back for him to that for that stout three and two thirds. Oh, uh, what a deal. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe maybe Comcast and Bally's could get a new deal going where they only show the games where the pitchers that you want to see are on. Yeah, yeah, something. What a deal that is. That's just more horrible PR. And the fact is, more than any other sports, uh, uh, baseball's audience is based on people who are older. Yes. You know, and the, the people who are older have have cable. Yes. They still have, they still have Comcast. I mean, I switched about four years ago. But uh, just because it got ungodly priced, and now with all the apps my wife's got, I probably spent on more money than I did when I had <laughs> when I had cable. But uh, uh, but you know that they're 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 really this is people outstate Minnesota. I don't think there's many people who are still watching it, right? Because they no. you know not only Comcast, but uh, I think what. They got deals with a couple of the cable companies, the smaller ones, right? But uh, well, Charter and Cox have... they got, but those aren't the big yeah. ones here. I think Midco, no, I saw no. Midco, people were telling me Midco has gone off the air too. Oh, but... they are, oh that that's a that's an outstate one too that you see a lot. So Yeah. People and then those them. poor people in Iowa who uh you know, who get the M L B package and uh and they, they still got the idiotic MLB package where you can't watch the local team. That right. is the dumbest thing of all time. But right. I don't know. It's baseball. I blame I blame the Twins, obviously, but I also blame Major League Baseball for not being ready for this. And, yeah. You no. Know, the speed up rules were great, but uh, since then they've uh, they've screwed up everything, and they've gotten no. They got outsmarted once again on their, uh, you know, okay, we're going to discourage huge spending by, uh, by uh, you know, putting the super cap on where they have to donate more right. money. And then the, you know, the agents and everybody else are too smart for them and defer the money. And uh, right. uh, so they, you know, the Dodgers aren't paying nearly the, the excess uh, rate that they should be paying with having signed the two Japanese guys. Right. Yeah. Anyway. It's, yeah. The, the TV stuff's a mess. And I, I think the point I made the other day when I had uh, Phil Miller on was it's, you know, now you're, now you're cutting down to the, to, to the bone with the people who have stuck with cable yes. all this time. Right. Like these are the people who thought they were kind of bulletproof that thought, okay, as bad as it's as bad as it can get. Look at all you guys who ditched this for streaming. We we're we're over here. We still got this. And now you're yeah. you're alienating the core, the people who have been watching these teams for decades now, and that's the big problem. You're not you're not just making the cord cutters mad and saying, oh, you couldn't you can't get the teams at the the cheaper price anymore. You're you're alienating the older core fan base that's watched this team for decades. Yeah, that's uh, that's absolutely uh, true, and. Uh... I I can tell you that uh, without getting into details, uh, there's nobody more upset with this than Corey Provis, who oh, gave up sure. the radio to go on TV. I was riding in the elevator with him after the game the other day, and uh, was he's just he's he's depressed. I would say for uh, having uh, having made the switch, and uh, we're lucky to have him. But uh, a lot lot less people are able to listen to him or and watch him and action than were before and he's he's a really good uh yeah. a good play-by-play yeah. -play guy and a tradition of the twins previous great ones royal credit union smart checking accounts offer no monthly fees and no minimum balance enjoy financial freedom when you open your royal credit union smart checking account online at rcu.org slash go checking insured by ncua speaking of tradition of minnesota team um our PWHL team, Patrick, got into the playoffs. They made stormed it. Into, I'd say they stormed into the playoffs. <laughs> five uh, straight losses after being straight loss. first or second and, most of the year, right? Then they just kind of hit a yes, tailspin here at the and end. Five straight regulation losses yes. because they needed. Uh, they only needed one point in overtime to switch. Right. But then the Ottawa team choked yesterday, yes. so that got him into the playoffs anyway. 
Yes. That's four out of six, right? Do, do, yes. Does anybody know how the playoffs work in the PWHL? Well, did, did you see this, that the top seed gets to pick who they want to play? Oh, so, yeah, I saw that, yeah. So the top seed yeah, can works. either play Minnesota or... Yeah, or but is it a best of three or is it a best of one or what is it? Do we know that that you've you've caught me unprepared for? I don't know exactly (laughs) how the uh, how the formatting goes. They don't have have nicknames yet. How can we be expected to know the formats of the the playoffs? Uh, Maybe uh, maybe they don't know yet. I don't know. It must be best of three, isn't it? I mean, that would seem that would seem logical. I mean, at least they can't just be a one game thing. I wouldn't. Yeah, you can't make an you can't do that in in a hockey series. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if a... I was, you know what I was, if I was one of those teams, you know what I'd do? What's that? I would have a public thing and, uh, and just because it's hockey and you don't want to irritate the other team by saying, we want to play you, right. you know, which is stupid. Right. I'd have a, like a big box in there with 25 numbers in it <laughs> and, you know, 13 numbers for each team equally right. and then reach in it and pull out if right. it said three or four that's the team i right. play that'd be funny that'd be anyway. good then, then you're, you're then you're not and, sending the signal that you think some and, other team's and, inferior and, and, and plus you could have actually the team you wanted to play on every one of those you but you could just it. pretend yeah. like it yes. was just just kind of like kind of like the nba lottery used to be when they wanted patrick ewing to play right. with the, the frozen next, envelope you know? theory yeah yeah right <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, yeah, but uh, we're gonna be offended. We're gonna be offended if that the, whoever won the league picks yes. us. You know, they have no, they have no respect for us. Well, they should. You lost your last lost five. Your last five. The all-time back into the playoffs in history. For goodness sakes. Well, there was, although, yeah. Although the Minneapolis Lakers, uh, the last year they were here, I believe. Back in the days of the eight team NBA, uh-huh. they were 25 and 50. I think they played 75 games and okay. they made the playoffs and they got through the first round and really? made it to the NBA five, the division final. Yeah, they were 25 and 50. And then they, I think they won a best out of three or something. They do like that. that. They played his third in the, in the West because there was somebody worse than them and then they beat somebody. And that was the, I think that was the last year they were here. I always look back on that though as the uh, as the difference in newspapering as we as we wonder about everything now. Uh, there was a if you look back now, the rumors were strong that the Lakers were going to L.A. I mean, it was pretty yeah. well known. But when the when the Lakers Lakers lost their last game, the Lakers uh, said. It, the, there's a little box on the front page, just a little box on the front page yeah. of the Tribune that says, Lakers lose finale. Team <laughs> will move to L.A. See <laughs> sports for details. <laughs> wow. It was like a 10 graph. It was a 10 graph on byline thing saying they're, going to, they're, going, to, uh, they're going to Los Angeles officially. The uh, although when the last draft was held, which was a couple of days later, the last they were still uh, Minneapolis in the uh, in the uh, in, in, when they were drafting, uh, they were still Minneapolis, and the player they chose was Jerry West. Wow. Uh, yeah. So they would have had you know Baylor and yeah. Baylor <laughs> was here two years, and they would have had Baylor and West. Wow. And uh, uh, you know that when they left here. Uh, Ripple had a story on uh, on the uh, you know why did they leave in curious Minnesota that thing yeah oh yeah I saw that yeah Sundays yeah Ripple had a longer version of that story but I think I looked it up in their first fifty one years in the in Los Angeles they went to the finals twenty five times That's amazing I think that was you know, that I mean seems it, right it, it yeah. Was, it was such a it was a really small league, of course, yeah. in the early years, but then as the league got growing, they still ended up going to the championship series for every other year for for a half a century. You were absolutely right too. Uh, while we were talking, I was looking it up. They had that nineteen fifty nine sixty season, twenty five and fifty, made the playoffs. They they got better as the year went on. They finished they won four of their last six. So they weren't quite like our PWHL squad, but they yeah, you're right. They took to beat the Pistons easily in a best of three. They won both those games and they were up three, two 
yes, in the uh, in the, the next Hawks, series right? against St. Louis. St. Louis, yeah, Louis but, Hawks with Bob they got, Pettit. Yeah. They got beat pretty bad in the last uh, last two games, and that was that was all. You she know wrote, the. But... Um, you know that the Hawks went from Milwaukee to St. Louis to Atlanta. No, yeah, they were boom boom those Jeez. teams, and they might have been in some little smaller town before they went to Milwaukee, Kenosha, wow. or someplace. You know. It is amazing when you look back at the grassroots of pro basketball. Oh, teams just used to they move all the time. In, they had teams in Anderson, Illinois. I mean, yeah. Anderson, Indiana, and places like that. So, well, but people ask me why I why why I'm still working. Yeah. Three days ago, without looking it up, when I decided I was going to write about 1980 twins, I said I do believe. That John Castino won the triple crown with that <laughs> team batting with 13 home runs, 64 RBIs, and a 301 batting average. The batting average was 302. <laughs> Beyond that, I remembered it, which means my mind still works yes. when I'm in sports. When I leave the house, I forget my cell phone. Right. Then I forget my keys. Then I forget my wallet. Then I forget whether I'm backing up or driving forward. But when I'm thinking about sports, I still have a memory. And I just told you they were 25 and 50. You nailed it. You were absolutely right. You and you. And when I started talking about who they lost to in the playoffs, you knew exactly who I was talking about. Yeah, it's it's amazing sports. You know, obviously, I, uh, I don't have as much history as you do with it. But I, you know, there's weird things that it'll just dredge up in my memory too. Like why did I, why do I remember this about? The Atlanta Braves from 1988. Why do I remember this and that? It's it's amazing. It's a, it's an amazing thing, Patrick. Yes, sir. 